when I design, I will walk up and down and wear things in myself and see how I feel. I'm a designer of memorable, not always commercial clothes. Freddie pioneered free spirit into what he was going to wear. So by coming to a person that designs for women's clothes, it meant it didn't really matter. I don't think one even thought of androgyny. I don't know that he really would have done. He just, I think he, he, he something about him would have just been the, a free spirit wanting to look wonderful and he saw in my clothes they were making him look wonderful. For me, as a designer, I was involved in knowing that he looked right. I was involved in making sure that the garment didn't move all over the place and look terrible when he was doing whatever he wanted to do. I received a phone call from it might have been Brian, I'm not sure if it was Brian or Freddie. I had to say to the girls who worked for me, what do they play? They had a hit on at that moment, but the girls had to tell me which it was when it came on the radio. <laughs> and um, I said, well, I haven't got a changing room. I had a, a sort of top floor. So I said, well, you better come in the evening. So they came something like six o'clock in the evening. And then I, got a few things out and then I said to Freddie, look, go, go through the rail and pick out what you fancy, put it on and then here's the mirror, move around and see how, how you fancy and, and is it what you want for your stage presence? And so he went to the rail and picked out what was originally a wedding top. It had lace on it, but I made his without the lace and it was all pleated. And that, that's when he started doing all those lovely movements. It was more like love at first sight that he went to the rail. I think he decided that he wanted a Zandra Rhodes and came and picked things that would work. He was aware of my clothes and I think that he was also aware of stage presence. You know, when I saw him move across the room and work out how he would wear these things. so. I would have thought he looked at some of the things I'd done and thought that they'd be lovely to, for him to, to work on the stage. This is the Freddy one. And you see, it would have been on a rail in my room. He would have tried this on and then I told him to move around the room and see how he felt. And really look in the mirror because you know, they're the ones performing before the audience. So they have to know, does this really, if he's, if he's doing something, does it do what he really wants it to do and help? I mean, maybe I was lucky enough to help with some of the movements he might have wanted because he came to me and there might not have been anything like this anywhere else in the world at that time. The original is now in Montreux Museum. Well, this is one of the pleated boleros that I made for Brian. Um, so it was, it's in satin and then it was printed with my Indian feather design and then it's pleated and then it was made into a bolero and it's pleated to go around the neck and then he wore it with this metallic scarf. And it's short at the back so it's got like wing sleeves. And this is really my classic ladies' evening jacket that Brian was wearing. I would say the, that we were parallel in, in, you know, trying out new ideas, going forward. They went forward with a little bit of mine. Then I'm sure they were inundated traveling all the time. And I was touring around America doing a lot of my shows. So you know, they hunted me out in a lovely little attic. And I heard from another friend of mine who's a collector who came to London, saw a picture of one of my things in English Vogue in, in, in 1970 and hunted me out to find my clothes. So, because they weren't in all the shops at that time. They gave me tickets for their concert 
and I went to the concert and saw Freddie wearing it. That was when Earl's Court still existed. And I went with my great friend Dougie Field, the painter, and to, to see him on the stage was quite wonderful, but it was like going into the, um, you know, going into that concert in Earl's Court was packed. But I was at least 10 years older than anyone else there. So I did feel a bit ancient. That was then, they must have been touring around Europe and everything, so it wasn't really until Freddie died that the relationship really built up between myself and Brian and the fans who always wanted me to sign the picture of him in the pleated top. I really feel complimented that that's always the one I'm signing in Queen's catalogues. They were probably always traveling and I'm not part of a, I, of a concert scene, so in fact, I, I looked at the film and I thought, you know, I should enrol to go to some of these concerts and make sure I'm around. Freddie wanted boldness and expressiveness when, you know, like someone who might have been quiet or whatever they are, but when they get put into that costume and they're out on stage with all that going on, and then probably he might have seen like some of the pictures, like the one that I, or in my book, that immortalizes him with that pleated top. He might have looked at that and then thought, yes, that's right, I want to project that, I'll wear more makeup with that, or I'll wear my hair like that, you know, and sort of seen, you know, you see bits of your press because you're signing it all the time, as to whether that's how he wanted to promote himself. You know, once they're on stage and moving, the, the sound will take over, so it's only on a stationary photograph here and there, which will then get remembered. I think that Queen and Freddie, of course, with him dying, he was immortalised, in which case you look back to the things that he immortalised, but they might have been just passing things, but for that fact but then they become immortalized. And then with the fact that what they did was of revolutionary value, it means it then goes on to influence the future and come back again in the same way that the costumes are so relevant now. If you're examining the whole story as we now see it, I suppose he was coming into his own and he was developing his own sense. He hunted me out in my funny little attic. He came to see me. He did come with Brian, they, you know, but he came along and to work out and what, and, and really just express himself. We were, well, there were only the three of us in the room at the time when he was trying the things on. They were very genuine. They produced their own sounds in the same way that I think that they controlled their image. And I feel very lucky that I was part of that image and that it's part of my repertoire. She's a killer, queen, gun fight, eternity, dynamite with a laser beam, guaranteed to blow your mind.